So now I'm going to take you through a two plate polygraph, um, including oak tea stencils. So here we have the two plates, the very simple underplate and the more complex top plate. I'm going to put the top plate to one side and I'm just going to ink up this very simple yellow underplate. So I'm working yellow ink into the zones. This is just um, peeled surface of the mount board. And then for the path in this area, I have another colour. Working at speed here, and sometimes I forget to use the uh, little piece of new sheet to prevent, prevent my fingers getting ink onto the areas that I've already worked. Once the underplate is inked up, I do my dirty bottom on the back. So again, just skimming very, very lightly the bottom surface, and this will leave a mark on my new sheet when I take it through the press, so I can see where to put the top plate. I put the underplate to one side and start working on the more textured top plate. So I try and have the uh, scrims laid out, these little pieces of fabric laid out. Each one is dedicated to a different colour and I try not to mix them up. If you mix them up, you end up getting khaki coloured prints and that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make and, and wonder why their colours aren't clear. Um, every time I ink up, I tend to use the same um, series of movements in the same direction, in the same order, and it becomes a sort of a pattern, a habit, a sort of a muscle memory. So with this one, I know that I do the path in the sepia ink. One of the weird things about ink is that sepia is this sort of dark brown, not the orange that we tend to think of from photographs. And then I'm going to work it into the trunk area. As I said before, the um, areas that are uh, more textured can benefit by having runnier ink. And I loosen the ink with something called extender. So I'm putting it on and then I'm sort of taking off any excess. Right, now I'm going to move to the green areas. So again, this is um, string with kitchen salt on the top and it's a very textured pitted area, so it will need runnier ink. The problem with these textured areas, if you don't get the ink in, when the print goes through the press, um, it will leave white areas where there, there was no ink put onto the plate. And they are very noticeable. I don't let people say happy accidents when they're working with me. If, you know, if it's meant to be in there, you put it in there. Right, same with the bottom area with the grass. I'm going to add the green. I'm not worried about having exactly the same shades of green on each print. I quite like the variety. The colourway stays the same. Keeps it a little bit more interesting for me if I'm going to have to do 30 editions of a piece. What I can do when I put the base colour on and taking it back down to the area or the, the level that the ink wants to stay. I can actually put in little highlights if I want to. So. Maybe one up in the tree. Um, I'm now going to do a surface roll again. Surface rolls 
which are a relief form of printmaking, work very well on string areas. And you can see how much it picks up and highlights the high points. What I'm now going to do is clean out the glue areas that I want to be pale. You can see how much ink is, is coming off even a resist area. And as before, if there's something that's very narrow, I can always use a cotton bud to work into it. And the last thing I'm going to do with this is to sprinkle the oats. Once I've sprinkled them, it's actually fine to sort of move them around, tease them into a more pleasing position. If I've got one that's a bit of a funny shape, I might break it up and put it back down. Now it's ready to go through the press.